So the paper titled, quote, Stimulation of Hair Growth by Topical Application of Androgens, unquote, by Christopher M. Papa and Albert M. Kligman focused on the effects of topical application of androgens, specifically testosterone propionate, on hair growth in bald men. Their study stemmed from the previous observation that testosterone propionate could stimulate hair growth in the armpit area and on the forearm when applied topically, though not when administered systemically. The researchers applied testosterone propionate creams to the scalp of 21 men, and this was to investigate the potential for stimulating the hair in that particular area, specifically the bald regions of the scalp. So this study found that approximately 75% of the participants exhibited some degree of hair regrowth on the scalp, indicating that topical application of androgens, specifically testosterone propionate, could be a promising approach for treating male pattern baldness by promoting growth of longer, thicker, and more pigmented hairs in the bald areas. This supposed regrowth, and I say supposed because we'll look at what actually went on later on, but it was characterized by hairs that were longer, thicker, and more pigmented than in the previously bald areas. So from this outcome, the researchers concluded that it's likely that testosterone and other androgens, right, and this was before a time they actually looked into DHT, but they supposed that testosterone could stimulate hair follicles to create just you know, in general, stronger hairs. Now, this, again, is intriguing because we know with recent advancements, right, this is a very, very old study, but with recent advancements, we know that testosterone, maybe not it in particular, but when it turns into DHT, dihydrotestosterone, that is the primary factor in progressing male pattern baldness, also known as androgenetic alopecia, which men and women can get. But I find this to be a bit, you know, weird because when you look at the study's control mechanisms and you just look at the lack of technology that they had back then, you can kind of see that the hair growth that they're trying to assess, there could be a large degree of subjectivity. So the study's control mechanisms, though present, could have been strengthened by including a placebo group or comparing the testosterone treatment to another active treatment. The sample size of the study was relatively small, with only 21 participants receiving the treatment, limiting the ability to generalize the findings across a broader population. They didn't use any sort of photo trichogram. In fact, all of these assessments in terms of the progress were just made with general global photographic assessment. And when I'm looking at the photos, it doesn't really look that impressive. It's like these guys just grew out their hair. I'll try to see if I can use some AI tools to colorize the photos, but this isn't anything substantial. It's not solid proof of testosterone, propionate, or androgens being used to strengthen hair on the scalp. So for me, I'm not going to go too crazy into this study, but I don't think it's a good study. It does not conclusively show that testosterone propionate or androgens make the scalp hair stronger. So this next part is a study that I found pretty interesting. It deals with testosterone and how it may help women who are androgen deficient grow hair on their scalps. This seems to be kind of paradoxical because we associate androgens both in men and women, particularly DHT, as the driver of male pattern baldness, female pattern baldness, in general, androgenetic alopecia. So both men and women possess androgens and estrogen receptors within the scalp, illustrating a shared biological foundation for hair growth regulation across the genders. Intriguingly, human development in the womb begins on a common path between men and women, with the initial stages of the embryonic development being essentially female until the activation of the Y chromosome for male fetuses. This eventually triggers male differentiation, but this fundamental process underscores the fact that, despite the divergent paths taken due to genetic and hormonal influences, men and women share similar hair follicle characteristics, to an extent that is. The microenvironment surrounding these follicles and the hormonal signals that govern hair growth and loss differ significantly between the sexes. These differences are largely due to the varying levels of androgens and estrogens in the body and how these hormones interact with their respective receptors in the scalp. 
The study titled, quote, Improvement in Scalp Hair Growth in Androgen Deficient Women Treated with Testosterone, a Questionnaire Study, unquote, published in the British Journal of Dermatology in February 2012, R. L. Glasser et al., offers a compelling challenge to the widely held belief that androgens, particularly testosterone, have a universally negative effect on female scalp hair growth. We know the etiology behind androgenetic alopecia. For the people that have the genetics for it, testosterone gets turned into DHT by way of 5-alpha reductase enzymatic activity in the scalp and peripheral tissues. DHT subsequently attaches to the androgen receptors in the hair follicle, ultimately suppressing them, particularly the Wnt pathway, and causing a whole host of downstream negative effects which leads to the hair follicle progressively growing thinner and smaller hairs and also reducing the number of hairs that are produced per follicle. It seems like in women, it tends to be the fact that their patterns of androgenetic alopecia hair loss follows a diffuse pattern, and for men, it has this kind of very rigid pattern where you have temporal recession and some thinning at the crown area. But either can happen in both men and women, it seems to be the case that the pattern in which an individual with androgenetic alopecia loses their hair seems to be some sort of genetic characteristic, kind of like your height, your eye color, etc., etc. So everyone has different patterns, right? But some are more common than others. Anyway, going back to the study, the research sought to evaluate the impact of subcutaneous testosterone therapy on the scalp hair growth among women experiencing symptoms of androgen deficiency. Involving 285 women who had been receiving testosterone treatment for at least a year, the study utilized a survey to gather data on changes in scalp and facial hair before and after therapy. The results showed that 27% of the participants reported hair thinning prior to treatment, with 63% of these women experiencing significant hair regrowth after undergoing testosterone therapy. Notably, none of the participants reported scalp hair loss due to the testosterone therapy, although a significant majority, around 92%, observed an increase in facial hair growth. And I can think, you know, women who are, you know, who want to be feminine presenting, right? We have to be careful what we say here. They probably don't want to have facial hair growth. So let's, uh, for all the ladies who are watching who may be losing hair, don't start taking uh, shots of, like, Anavar or something. Don't do that. That's uh, not going to look well unless you want to go into bodybuilding, right? So here, the findings suggest that testosterone may exert an anabolic effect on scalp hair growth in androgen-deficient women, a notion that contradicts the prevailing view that testosterone worsens female scalp hair loss. The authors speculate that this positive impact on hair growth may stem from the general anabolic effects of testosterone rather than a direct relationship with androgen levels. Now, they do say that there needs to be further research on the matter, and they also emphasize that there needs to be more objectivity when it comes to assessing the hair regrowth. So this seems to be an instance in the literature where we have testosterone seemingly improving hair quality, but in this case, it's in women. So we can't really generalize that specifically to all women, right? Because it's specifically androgen-deficient women in this case. And we can't say that, oh, men will react the same way or women who are androgen-normal will react the same way. And also, the authors mentioned that they need to be more objective when it comes to assessing the hair quality, right? Because they used a survey where they just asked the participants, hey, how's your hair doing now? Are there any improvements? And who's to say that the improvements are directly due to testosterone? It could be due to just the hair recovering from telogen effluvium or chronic telogen effluvium, where you just start losing and shedding hair, or just some other hair loss condition, right? That probably got better on its own. Now, I think it's more true that for women who use testosterone, they will experience hair growth on their face. So I can see part of the surveys being more valid than other parts of the survey, just because of what we know in the clinical literature. So increasing testosterone, I can only imagine, would have an anabolic effect on body hair for women.